Hey there, welcome back to our Harkla YouTube channel. As always, we are so excited to have you back with us today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today, we're gonna talk about the spinal gallant reflex. If you are tuning into this video and you have no idea what primitive reflexes are, you're like, what on earth, a spinal what? Make sure that you go back and soak up some of our old content. We have lots of previous videos, we have podcasts, we have blog posts. We will link everything in the description below. Go get caught up and then come back and watch this video where we are going to dive deep on the spinal gallant. So a couple of facts about the spinal gallant reflex. The first one is that it helps with the development of the inner ear, which helps contribute to balance, coordination, and the vestibular system. It also supports development of that posterior chain of the backside of the body. It is elicited by stimulation to the spine, which again connects to the birthing process. When the contractions stimulate the spine, it kind of helps the baby uh, corkscrew and turn and kind of wiggle their way down the wiggle their way wiggle their way down the birth canal um, to come out. So it's really important to be aware of the birthing process when you are looking at a child who might have this reflex retained. Another fact about the spinal gallant is that it helps prepare the child, the infant, for crawling since it does develop that posterior chain and throughout the hips. So it also has a connection to gross motor coordination and coordinate like bilateral coordination of the arms and legs. Mm -hmm. This reflex is also connected to the vestibular system as well as the auditory system. Some research is showing the connection between what babies can hear in utero to that spinal gallant reflex. So it's really it's really cool just to hear the connection of like what these babies are, you know, experiencing in utero, like listening to mom's voice and music and what they're connecting to on the outside world. Once they have become earth side, they, uh, you can see that connection there and it's partially related to that spinal gallant reflex. So in infancy, the spinal gallant is triggered by stimulation to the lower back. So when your infant is laying on their tummy, you can stroke along the side of their spine and you will see hip movement away from the stimuli. And you can do this on the left side of their spine and the right side of their spine and you will see that hip movement in either direction when you stimulate the back. In addition, when you provide that stimulation, it can also elicit urination. And so that's why we're gonna talk about the connection up to bedwetting later on in this video. But you will see that, um, oftentimes you'll see that connection when the baby's back is stroked, you'll see them urinate if they don't have a diaper on. The spinal gallant is developed in utero, should be fully developed and ready to go by birth, and then is integrated anywhere between three and nine months of age. Now we say these ranges, three to nine months, that's a big range. There are so many variables to these primitive reflexes in general. So just know this is like our, just an average. This is just what the research shares and we are passing that information to you. Now we wanna give you a couple of signs in older children that the spinal gallant might be retained or stuck in the body. And the first one is excessive fidgeting while seated. So oftentimes we'll see these kiddos in a classroom and it, they act like they have ants in their pants. They can't it still and it's actually the spinal gallant reflex being trigger triggered by their clothing on their back or the chair of their seat. <laughs> like I had already mentioned previously that connection to bedwetting generally beyond the age of six if a child is still wetting the bed at night we want to make sure we're ruling out that spinal gallant reflex making sure it's not retained because when a child is tossing and turning or the sheets are tickling their back it can elicit that urination like I mentioned. Yep. Another sign might be hypersensitivity to certain clothing or textures on their hands, their body. Oftentimes these kiddos will struggle to tolerate the tags on clothing or seams on their socks, and it could be related to a routine spinal gallant reflex. The last symptom we're going to chat about today, definitely not the least, but it is poor concentration. So anytime a child is really struggling to concentrate in class or in an academic setting, we want to make sure that we're ruling out that spinal gallant reflex. Now we want to leave you with one super fun activity that you can do with your child, that you can do with your clients if you're a therapist, and this activity really targets the spinal gallant reflex. So the activity is heel reaches with stickers. And so we're going to have the child lay on their back and we're going to put some stickers on one of their, the outside of their feet, okay? And then we're going to reach laterally and grab a sticker 
and then we're going to pass it to our other hand and reach to the other side laterally and we're going to stick it on our other foot. So we're kind of doing that ab, that ab exercise, heel reaches left and right, kind of working those transverse abdominal muscles. I don't actually know which muscles we're working, but we are going to work on that core strength, but we're also getting that tactile stimulation to the back, which is really beneficial for that spinal galant reflex. Now, if your child is unable to complete this activity because it's tickling their back too much or they're just unable to tolerate that movement side to side, they're unable to keep their head lifted up off the ground while they do it, they're unable to have full range of motion to be able to reach laterally to both sides, those could all be signs that the spinal gallant reflex might be retained and it would be worth looking into some primitive reflex testing. Okay, that was a lot, but obviously we're really passionate about this topic and we want to let you know if you're curious about learning testing and integration, functional activities, if you're like, okay, this sounds like my child, I need to learn more. We do have a full course available. It's just been completely rebranded and it is absolutely, I mean, we're a little bit um, what's the word? Biased. Biased, but it is really great. This course is super cool because there's actually three different purchase options. The expert purchase option is designed for parents just learning about primitive reflexes who want to help their child integrate some retained primitive reflexes. The second option is the master purchase option, and this is more geared towards professionals, educators, therapists who are working with children who want the full gamut of everything you can possibly have to help with primitive reflex integration. And then the third option is our AOTA CEU certified version where if you're an occupational therapist or an occupational therapy assistant like us, you actually earn continuing education credits for taking this course. The other thing that was really exciting, I'm just so excited. Okay. I know. <laughs> the other thing that is so exciting about the AOTA CEU version is you actually get this workbook included in your purchase. So this workbook includes all of the PDFs and resources that you get in all the courses, but it's just printed in this handy dandy workbook you know, easily accessible if you're in the clinic, you can quick flip to a page if you aren't sure how to test for a specific reflex or if you need some activity ideas. There are tons of options in here and it just makes the course like more applicable and it's just so much easier to implement when you have everything in front of you. But again, the PDFs are included in all of the options. The AOTA version just includes this workbook. You can purchase the workbook separately if you don't need the AOTA CEUs, but you still want the workbook, that's an option as well. Like Rachel said, there's a ton of PDFs that come with all three purchase options. All three options also include lots of video demonstrations so that all the activities and exercises we teach you, there's a video to follow it up so it shows you exactly what it should look like and what it shouldn't look like. So we kind of go back and forth and show you all of the different things. And another great thing is there's a discussion forum within the course. So if you have questions or comments as you're going through the course, you can pop in there, put your question in there. Rachel and I will actually go in there a couple of times a week and respond to any questions, have these amazing discussions and brainstorming sessions within the course. The course also includes checklists for kids, for parents, for adults to really help identify if those reflexes are retained or not before you move into that formal testing, which we teach you. We also have case studies as well in this course, so that way you can see us testing kiddos, you can see what these reflexes look like when they are retained or when they're integrated based on real kiddos, which was um, some input that we'd received from our previous course. We, go, we went ahead and added that in to this version and it just makes the application so much easier. Yeah. So like Rachel already said, we're super excited for this course. You can find the link to the course in the description below. So that is it for you today. We hope that it was helpful. We had a great time chatting with you about these reflexes. You know we're completely obsessed about this topic. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram if you don't already. You can find us at harkla underscore family as well as at all things sensory podcast. Going along with that, we do have a podcast with tons of episodes. We talk a lot about reflexes there as well. Obviously, it's about sensory, so we talk about that too. You can find it on all major podcast platforms. It's called All Things Sensory. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you never miss another video. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this video today. Share it with a friend who might also find it helpful. 
and we will talk to you next week. Okay, bye. Did I? I kind of laughed at myself when I said that, though, right? I had to okay, hold good. it in. Oh,